Canto 30, Circle 8, Bolgia 10, The Falsifiers, The Remaining Three Classes, Evil Impersonators, Counterfeiters, False Witnesses. At the time when Juno took her furious revenge for Semele, striking in rage again and again the Theban royal house, King Athamas, by her contrivance, grew so mad that seeing his wife out for an airing with his two sons, he cried to his retinue, Out with the nets there, nets across the pass, for I will take this lioness and her cubs, and spread his talons mad and merciless. And seizing his son, Laarchus, whirled him around and brained him on a rock, at which the mother leaped into the sea with her other son and drowned. And when the wheel of fortune spun about to humble, the all-darling Trojans' pride, so that both king and kingdom were wiped out. Hecuba, mourning, wretched and a slave, having seen Polyxena sacrificed, and Polydorus, dead without a grave, lost and alone, beside an alien sea, began to bark and growl like a dog in the mad seizure of her misery. But never, in Thebes nor Troy, Fury seen to strike at man or beast in such a mad rage as two I saw, pale, naked, and unclean, who suddenly came running towards us then, snapping their teeth as they ran like hungry swine let out to feed after a night in the pen. One of them sank his tusks so savagely into Capocchio's neck that when he dragged him, the ditch's rocky bottom tore his belly. And the Aretine, left trembling by me, said, That incubus in life was Gianni Schicchi. Here he runs rabid, mangling the other dead. So, I answered, and so may the other one not sink his teeth in you, be pleased to tell us what shade it is before it races on. And he, that ancient shade in time above was Mira vicious daughter of Cinerus, who loved her father with more than rightful love. She falsified another's form and came disguised to sin with him, just as that other who runs with her in order that he might claim the fabulous uh, lead mare lay under disguise in Buoso Donati's deathbed and dictated a spurious testament to the notaries. And when the rabid pair had passed from sight, I turned to observe the other misbegotten spirits that lay about left and right. And there I saw another husk of sin, who, had his legs been trimmed away at the growing, would have looked for all the world like a mandolin, the dropsy's heavy humor, which so bunch and spread the limbs, had disproportioned him till his face seemed much too small for his swollen paunch. He strained his lips apart and thrust them forward the way a sick man, feverish with thirst, curls one lip toward the chin and the other upward. Oh, you exempt from every punishment of this grim world, I know not why, he cried. Look well upon the misery and debasement of him who was Master Adam. In my first life's time, I had enough to please me. Here I lack a drop of water for my thirst. The rivulets that run from the green flanks of Castentino to the Arno's flood, spreading their cool, sweet moisture through their banks, run constantly before me, and their plash and ripple and imagination drives me more than the disease that eats my flesh. Inflexible justice that has forsaken and spread my soul like hay to reach it the more closely finds the country where my guilt was bred this increase of my grief. For there I learned, there in Romana, to stamp the Baptist image on alloy gold till I was bound and burned. But I could see the soul of Guido there, or of Alessandro, or of their filthy brother. I would not trade that sight for all the clear, cool flow of Branda's fountain. One of the three if those wild wraiths who run here are not lying, is here already. But small good it does me when my legs are useless. 
Were I light enough to move as much as an inch in a hundred years long before this, I would have started off to cull him from the freaks that fill this foss, although it winds on for 11 miles and is no less than half a mile across. Because of them, I lie here in this pig pen. It was they persuaded me to stamp the florins with three carats of alloy, and I then. Who were those wretched two sprawled alongside your right-hand borders and who seemed to smoke as a washed hand smokes in winter? He replied, They were here when I first reigned into this gully and have not changed position since, nor may they, as I believe, to all eternity. One is the liar who charged young Joseph wrongly, the other, Sinon, the false Greek from Troy, a burning fever makes them reek so strongly. And one of the false pair, perhaps offended by the manner of Master Adam's presentation, punched him in the rigid and distended belly. It thundered like a drum, and he retorted with an, al with an arm blow to the face that seemed delivered no whit less politely, saying to him, Although I cannot stir my swollen legs, I still have a free arm to use at time when nothing else will answer. And the other wretch said, It was not so free on your last walk to the stake, free as it was when you were co coining. And he of the dropsy, That's true enough, but there was less truth in you when they questioned you at Troy. And Sinon then, for every word I uttered that was not true, you uttered enough false coins to fill a bushel. I am put down here for a single crime, but you for more than any fiend in hell. Think of the horse, replied the swollen shade, and may it torture you, perjure, to recall that all the world knows the foul part you played. And to you, the torture of the thirst that fries and cracks your tongue, said the Greek, and of the water that swells your gut like a hedge before your eyes. And the coiner, so so is your own mouth clogged with a filth that stuffs and sickens it as always, if I am parched while my paunch is waterlogged. You have the fever and your cankered brain, and were you asked to lap Narcissus's mirror, you would not wait to be invited again. I was still standing, fixed upon those two, when the master said to me, Now keep on looking a little longer, and I quarrel with you. When I heard my master raise his voice to me, I wheeled about with such a start of shame that I grow pale yet at the memory. As one trapped in a nightmare that has caught his sleeping mind, wishes within the dream that it were all a dream, as if it were not, such I became. My voice could not win through my shame to ask his pardon, while my shame already won more pardon than I knew. Less shame, my guide said, ever just and kind, would wash away a greater fault than yours. Therefore, put back all sorrow from your mind, and never forget that I am always by you should it occur again as we walk on, that we find ourselves where others of this crew fall to such petty wrangling and upbraiding. The wish to hear such baseness is degrading.